Rochester and today we're outside of Sheriff O'Flynn's office because he's been kind of jerking us around the past couple weeks and I mean not only How has he been jerking you around the past couple? <laughs> what's been going on? Not just us, you know, it's probably the whole time he's been in office. But uh, in particular, Elizabeth McGriff and Barbara Horton are facing eviction by two different greedy banks who aren't in our community. And um, Sheriff O'Flynn's backing them up for some reason. So he's for these big greedy banks that are out of Rochester, out of state, and not for our community. Um, these, these women are being wrongfully evicted from their homes with their families and um, they scheduled us two evictions at the same time, on the same day, to try to divide and conquer us, and uh, we proved to them that they couldn't do that. They did call off uh, Ms. Horton's eviction, but they proceeded to threaten us with Elizabeth's eviction. Um, they ended up not showing up. They backed down. Um, due to the weather. <laughs> due, to, due to the weather. But we had, you know, 50 plus people out there in the weather. Yes, Woo! beautiful rally. Oh. The community really came together in support of Elizabeth <laughs> McGriff and her family. Um, they threatened us uh, by telling us that they were coming later that evening. We waited it out. They told us they were scheduling for the following Tuesday. We scheduled another eviction rally. They backed down again. Sheriff O'Flynn backed down again. And now we're bringing it to him. We're bringing the rally to him. Woo! for Elizabeth and, and one thing that I find really deplorable about the way the sheriff has been handling this is uh, they can come at any time. They're not giving any communication or negotiating or communicating at all with Elizabeth McGriff or any of the people supporting her. Um, and and the way that we found out they were coming on Tuesday was actually by contacting her lawyer. Bank's lawyer. The bank's lawyer. Um, so there's, there's, there's very little that they're giving Elizabeth McGriff to, to handle this sort of stress. Uh, and they're intentionally, you know, dragging her along. And so, you know, we don't want to just sit and wait for them. You know, we want to bring it to their door because this is their responsibility to their community. We wanted to talk to the head guy, <laughs> but he was, on a, he was unavailable. Um, we wanted to set up an appointment and um, they gave us a number to call to set up an appointment. So they took the letter and they said they would deliver the letter to the sheriff. Um, Barbara talked about the situation and um, talked about how unjust it was. We had to add an additional message to the letter uh, <laughs> that we wanted to call for a meeting to talk about the changes of the policy of the evictions. And uh, we wanted to, actually wanted to talk to him, but they wouldn't let us talk to him because they said they didn't know whether or not he was in or not. So, well, they could ask him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we could so ask him. So they wanted us to go up to see if he was there or not, or, or the secretary couldn't come down and talk to us or anything. So they said they have like procedures that they have to go by, that we can't just you know just go up there and ask for a meeting because we had the letter. So he said he would deliver the message. And we've been calling you know, them for two weeks. So I asked yeah. the question, how would he respond to us? Would it be through a letter or would he contact somebody? Then he said that he didn't know, but he knew about everybody else business, knew who I was, knew who Liz was, and told Julian when that they had no business there because they weren't, you know, they weren't any victims. So it was like there's the two of us that had the business there. Um, well, basically when we went in there from the beginning, they were giving us the basic runaround. You know, we have no idea whether he's up there. You guys can't go up there and check. We can't go up there and check. <laughs> the secretary can't come down and talk to you. We will convey the message to this person and they will convey the message to that person and then you might get a response at some point. So basically we aren't going to stand for their basic runaround and they actually told us that we were impeding them from completing their normal business procedure because they have other citizens to serve. But are we not citizens that Yay! need to be served? Democracy looks like this is what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. 
So I think it's really great that we were out here, negative five degrees. <laughs> Wind chill. <laughs> Showing the message they were, even though they had all their guns and all their stuff, they were very scared to see people out here and yeah. inside. They were very nervous. They're like, Where, which way is this going to go? It was you know, great how, you know, there was yeah. this one guy at the desk when we walked in. And then little by little, more and more, more turns out. Yeah, it was like they were all like, "What's going on over there?" <laughs> so I would say this is, this is very positive. But sometimes, sometimes we ask ourselves, "Wow, you know, is it worth getting up? Is it worth getting in the cold?" But I think we sent them a strong, strong message. They were very embarrassed that also the Channel 13 and oh, Channel okay. 8 was here. We're out here, Channing. Of course, part of them thinks that they're just. They, they think themselves in the right, but then they, of course they they look very embarrassed. Sergeant Freed and over there that that it's had to come to this that they thought that well they'll just sh squat these people off like a fly we're not going to return their calls you know we're not going to get back to them we don't care and now they got pie on their face because you know here we got the media here we got people here and it, and it doesn't pay to be jerks about this and that's why we're gonna i think it's clear we're at the house we're protesting we came where they were and we're we're everywhere and we're here to resist and we're here to stop it. And I think as long as we stick together, we're gonna do whatever we need to do in this community. Woo! Woo! What do we do with the back to Stand up, fight back! Yeah, so, so Elizabeth McGriff uh, bought her home 16 years ago um, from Mid First Bank, um, which is located in Atlanta, it's out of Atlanta. Um, so they're not, they're not a local bank. Um, and then um, they're, Elizabeth McGrath fell on hard times, um, you know, many years after that, you know, as many people did during the, the economic cri crisis, um, and missed a few payments and wanted to enter negotiations to, she wanted to modify her mortgage with the bank uh, in order to make it uh, more affordable for her given her new employment. Um, and they, they refused her um, and refused her again. Um, and, and she wanted to negotiate and refused her. Um, and then they filed, which is an illegal process, they filed for eviction at the same time as they entered into negotiations finally with her. Uh -huh. um, and this, this is an illegal process, they're not allowed to do that. It essentially shows that the banks had no intention of, um, of actually negotiating with the owner uh, or the homeowner. And um, so, so they were successful in the eviction. Um, papers but then they went to court and the court said that they couldn't evict her right and that they, they needed to re-go into they the to, process to because based because on illegal. that what was going on right so so but then they used this strange unprecedented um legal loophole okay. so they used the writ of assistance um which is a legal loophole that hasn't been used in in centuries um and you know many of the officials in the community that have um, been working on foreclosures uh, for all of their careers, have never heard of it being used. So there's no legal precedence um, and there's no way for her to fight that. Um, so, so, so we're out here today trying to um, tell Sheriff O'Flynn and also the rest of the community that this isn't okay. Uh, we have a lot of families that are going through similar things in addition to Elizabeth, she's just one of them. Um, and we want to make sure that people understand that, you know, treating our community in this way is, is deplorable, um, it's unjust, and we won't stand for it. No. When the people stand up, the they stand down. Tell me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Tell me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Show me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. But we're some 